And one of the reasons that measuring impact is so important is that people are going to increasingly want to know more about how their money is invested, whether their pensions are contributing to the climate problem or are part of the solution. And to talk about his new campaign to engage the public, please join me in welcoming world-renowned film director Richard Curtis to the stage. Thank you very much indeed. Um, it is a very interesting feeling being the least intelligent person in the room. Uh, I feel like I found myself sort of fat as I am and with no extra training on the starting block of the 100 meters final at the Olympics. Um, and Mark is Usain Bolt. but. Um, anyway, I'm very glad to be here, and I, I, I think I'm going to try and bring just one extra voice uh, into the room, which is that of ordinary people who don't really understand money, because I think we're at an extraordinary moment for how the public are starting to think about their money. I'm just going to whip you very, as it were, me as a normal person, through my journey of change. So in 1985, I went to Ethiopia and saw terrible things there that no human should suffer. And I came back and we started Red Nose Day and Comic Relief, which was a fundraising thing. We've raised over a billion pounds. And as it were, that was my CSR phase. You know, you do those things that you think will specifically help some people, and you're confident about that. Now, the next thing that we moved on to was, um, I remember having a conversation with Bob Geldof uh, in 2004, and he said that he'd raised more money in the course of one short tea break with President Mitterrand than he had in the whole of Band Aid and Live Aid, because there's more money in politics. And that moved me and a lot of people into the Make Poverty History campaign around the G7. And then it was that understanding that that's where the real money and that's where the real power is. But still then, we were missing out various elements in how it might be. And suddenly, I find myself in 2020 with the SDGs, which was such a rich combination, the MDGs north to south, SDGs suddenly saying you have to join climate together with injustice, together with poverty, and that those things are inextricably linked. And also, with the major uptake of the SDGs so far being with business. In 2005, we couldn't get any business person to talk to us about our Make Poverty History agenda. And now, we're suddenly at a point where business is getting more involved with the SDGs actually than governments are. And phase four, as it were, as I see of the way that I've thought about things, is this thing of behavior change. This is the real shit, generational shift that my children and most people no longer believe that relying on politicians or giving their money is the thing that they're going to change the world. They're actually saying, what can I actually do in order to make a difference? And they're finding that answer in really unexpected places. They're finding it in what they wear, they're finding it in what they eat, they're finding it in how they travel. And I think the big new revelation is they're going to find it in where they put and where they invest their money. And we are starting a campaign about this because it suddenly occurred to us that the issue of people's financial footprint is going to be a huge psychological change. And this is both with ordinary people, but with all the employees who work for companies, and indeed with the new wealthy. And we've got a little film I'd like to show you here, just showing the first time, and this was just shot last year, the first time that it occurs to people 
that their pensions might be something that can change the world. It's actually never occurred to me before that my pension could be something that would create change. That's the dream, yeah. Tell me about it. I would wonder why I hadn't been told about it already. It doesn't sound like it can or, or should work. I think most people don't know what their pension's investing in. It'd be good to know more about the companies that my pension is being invested in, whether they're doing good in the world. Who are they? Who are they run by? What are they doing? Where are they? What? Invest in these? You're reading this like a list of horror. Making weapons and ammunition, it's a no-go. Cigarette companies, coal mines, oil companies, gambling, <laughs> no way. Like something better could be done, done with my money. Oh, there you go. That is a stunning list of good things. If my pension went to these things, that would be a wonderful, wonderful thing. Social housing, infrastructure like schools and hospital. I would definitely want my money to be invested in building wind farms, tackling climate change. Companies that treat their work as well, this is my kind of list. And I, as a kind of customer, can feel, first of all, better about where my money is going, but also you would assume that those pensions would do actually quite well, probably make more money ultimately. Responsible investing is investing in companies which look after their workforce, look after the environment and have a kind of long-term sustainable view about the world and their company. It would make me feel, feel better in some, some small way that the things that I believe in, the things that I'm, I think are important and are important to me are being reflected in how my money is being used. I would probably go so far as to say I would increase my pension contributions. Yeah, I'm going to go make some calls and I'll leave here. Now I'm going to run back home and check. Understanding that the money could be working and obviously working to contribute to a better world. That's pretty amazing. I think this is a key to a huge change that is going to happen to the public. And by the way, I don't think it's only about pensions. Uh, we've really focused on pensions because it's one particular area and we're starting in the UK. But I think that everyone is going to start asking these questions about insurance. Everyone's going to start asking these questions about banks. So in April, um, today is the day for alliteration, we're starting this campaign, Make My Money Matter, and it's part of a large movement that will be coming, I think, more and more to light with people like Share Action, more and more NGOs like the World Wildlife Fund and Greenpeace starting to talk to their supporters about this. And what we're saying to people is don't support things that contradict your own lifestyle. Don't campaign for peace and fund arms. Don't stop your kids smoking and support cigarette manufacturers. Don't make a hundred choices to the environment cycle into work, but then actually support fossil fuels. It really is time for people to make their money matter. It's time for pensions with intention. It's time to be pension positive. It's time to be proud of our pensions and what they are achieving in terms of creating a world that we all want to retire into and that we want our children to grow up into. And it is going to become more and more, as people ask this question, what can I do? They are going to be asking it of themselves, they are going to be asking it of their employers, and they're going to be asking it of all their financial relationships. And I think this will be everyone, from the richest to the poorest, saying, what can my money achieve? So what I really want to say is that this is perfect timing to have the COP now, to have all this legislative work going on now. When I first spoke to Mark about this, he raised all the issues that have held things back. The lack of public knowledge, the nervousness about whether returns would be the same in ethical investment, the lack of a sort of consistent evaluation framework, the many legislative problems that reach people when they try and make changes. But what he said to me was, do it anyway, um, because it's like dating. If everyone's waiting for the other person to make the move, nothing's ever going to happen at the end of the night. And you know he's right, because suddenly, as you're seeing today, the evaluation systems are being developed. Government is focusing extremely strongly on these things. There's absolute proof that the amount of returns 
uh, as we just heard, that are coming through from sustainable and ethical investments are proving consistently as good. When Comic Relief, my charity, got into trouble for some of the things that we were investing in. And that shows the level that the public doesn't understand, that a charity like ours wouldn't have even thought where our investments were five years ago. But we've shifted all our investments, and suddenly we're making more money than we did when we actually were in cigarettes, as it were. So the public are coming, and also the public are going to understand that this is not about sort of supporting a cocoa farm in Kenya, as it were. It is about affordable health care. It's about energy in this country. It's about affordable housing. So that you have this brilliant thing that it's no longer an issue of just being a thing where you think, well, I must do some good in the world. You're actually trying to build up the future of our country. Um, and when I started, Comic Relief, I was sitting in a room like this with a lot of comedians who are some of the most useless people in the country, um, and the least moral, and the least financially responsible or intelligent. Um, and we managed to raise some money. So what I just want to say as an outsider is you are in a position of astonishing power. And the public needs you to take the lead and needs you to be brave. It really is my opinion that the Mandelas and the Steve Bicos and the Gandhis of this generation have to be in business. They have to be the people who actually do extraordinary, radical, imaginative and lateral things. And I would just say to everyone in this room that if you can, go back to your work and don't think let's urge it along a bit. Uh, as the last speaker said, it needs a radical game change. And I think that there is the public support for and there will be the public demand for and the expectation of this generation of business people to be the most extraordinary generation yet. You are, at the moment, the necessary heroes, and it does require you to lead, not just to, as it were, responsibly follow. And the great thing about COP is it creates an urgency that we can all aim towards, and the thing about the SDGs is that they create an absolute demand for a decade of action. So um, I would just like to end, as all unintelligent people do, uh, with a quote from Shakespeare. Um, because I think, I think this is very true. There is a tide in the affairs of men which taken at the flood leads on to fortune, omitted all the voyage of their life is bound in shallows and in miseries. On such a full sea we are now afloat and we must take the current where it serves or lose our ventures. I beg you all to ask the same question that every passionate person and every investor is now going to ask every day, what can I actually do? And you do it. And let's make money matter in the serious business of living in an excellent world by 2020. The public are coming at you, and I know that you will respond with vigor, energy, imagination, products, and profit. Thank you.